And good morning and welcome to the Cathedral Church of All Saints here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Even though you may be thinking this is Christmas Eve, we ask you to hold that thought for a few moments because we are focused on the fourth Sunday of Advent for the next couple of hours at least. As we welcome you today, please note that you can find the service on our Cathedral Church website. Scroll down and you will find all of the services for today, which includes a four o'clock service led by our youth, a seven o'clock service, and an 11 o'clock service. The 11 o'clock service beginning at 10.30 with music featuring Capella Regalis choirs, the Cathedral Choir, and Maritime Brass. And we're pleased to have joining us for our services this, this evening, our Bishop, the, Reverend, the Right Reverend Sandra Fife. Also want to remind you that on the 28th, the Reverend Ron Harris is marking his 90th birthday. And the family invites you to a reception from two to five at the Lord Nelson, again on the 28th. And also we are having uh, a levy which will take place on New Year's Day and again invite you to join us for that service. That service will also be available online. For those who are in the cathedral this morning, if you haven't finished your Christmas shopping yet, we have one last opportunity for you as the St. Catherine's group is selling 2024 calendars at the entrance area of the church. That's on behalf of the St. Catherine's group. So do check them out as you're exiting the building today. Also, we have available some coffee, tea, and snacks at the end of our service. We're going to begin our liturgy with... I don't have a bullet. <laughs> we'll begin with the territorial acknowledgement, and then if you turn to the narrow insert, you will find the text for the lighting of the fourth Advent candle. So we begin by acknowledging that we are in Mi'kmaq, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. This territory is covered by the treaties of peace and friendship, which Mi'kmaq and Wallastuig people first signed with the British crown in 1725. The treaties did not deal with surrender of lands and resources, but in fact, recognized Mi'kmaq and Wallastuig title and established the rules for what was to be an ongoing relationship between nations. And now we will have the lighting of our Advent candle. When the angel Gabriel visited Mary, announcing God's plan for her to conceive and give birth to the Messiah, Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? And yet, only a few months later, Mary sings to Elizabeth, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. We, like Mary, hear God's call to be part of making God's dream for, a, for our salvation and flourishing a reality. And we question, how can this be? I am only, yet, like Mary, the onlys that make us hesitate are gifts God can and will use as God's love transforms us into bearers of good news.
We light these candles as signs of our shocking hope, our just peace, our fierce joy, and the love that transforms us into bold witnesses of God's salvation with our voices and our lives. Amen. Amen. I invite you to turn to page three of your leaflet as we share in the sentences for the gathering. Emmanuel, God with us in the past as we recount your story. Emmanuel, God with us in the present as we share your supper. Emmanuel, God with us in the future, as we celebrate your kingdom. Emmanuel, God with us in all time, as we look for your coming. Let us join together now in hymn 97, Jesus Came, the Heavens Adoring.
We turn now to the insert for the collect and scripture readings for today. And together let us share in the collect prayer. O God of Elizabeth and Mary, you visited your servants with news of the world's redemption in the coming of the Savior. Make our hearts leap with joy and fill our mouths with songs of praise so that we may announce glad tidings of peace and welcome your Christ into our midst. Amen. We invite you to be seated for the scripture reading. Let us prepare ourselves for the word of God as it comes to us in the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from 2 Samuel. Now when the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, see now, I am living in a house of cedar but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved, out, moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you, say, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more, and evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church.
And as a gradual hymn, the insert hymn, the angel Gabriel. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your will. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of Christ. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts 
be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Way back in 2007, a movie was released titled Stardust, which became one of my all-time favorite films. It is based on a novel from the imagination of best-selling author Neil Gaiman, and among its cast, it stars Claire Danes, Peter O'Toole, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Robert De Niro. The movie begins in the sleepy English village of Wall, so named for the stone wall that has, for hundreds of years, kept the villagers safely apart and separate from the strange supernatural realm that lies just on the other side of that wall. One night, a young, bumbling shop boy sees a shooting star streak across the heavens and make impact on the other side of that barrier wall. And he vows to bring back a piece of the star to win the hand of a girl he is head over heels in love with, and she, on the other hand, can't give him the time of day. Knowing the impossibility of anyone ever capturing a fallen star, she agrees to marry him if he successfully completes the quest. And so begins his adventures into the kingdom beyond the wall. The movie's opening scene is a panoramic view of the night sky and a voiceover that says, a philosopher once asked, are we human because we gaze at the stars or do we gaze at the stars because we are human? Pointless, really. Now, do the stars gaze back? Ah, that's the question. And throughout the movie, in the background, like a Greek tragedy, there is a cast of brothers who observe and make comments to one another as the story unfolds. So imagine that kind of a heavenly scene in which the decision is made to send the angel Gabriel, or Gabriella as we featured in last Sunday's pageant, to send an angel down to visit Mary. And again, imagine all the other angels and heavenly hosts hanging over the edge of the clouds to see what will happen. Of today's gospel reading on this fourth Sunday of Advent, Frederick Beekner, in his book Peculiar Treasures wrote, she struck the angel Gabriel as hardly old enough to have a child at all, let alone this child but he'd been entrusted with a message to give her, and he gave it. He told her what the child was to be named and who he was to be, and something about the mystery that was to come upon her. You mustn't be afraid, Mary, he said. And as he said it, he only hoped she wouldn't notice that beneath his great golden wings, he was trembling with fear to think that the whole future of creation hung now on the answer of this girl. The whole future of creation hung now on the answer of this girl. Imagine again all those angels gathered together, looking down, holding their collective breath. What will she say? Will she do it? Come on, Mary, say yes. Because they all know the way God works is only by allowing people freely to answer yes or no. Freedom of choice, the exercise of free will, has always been at the top of God's priority list when it comes to interaction with us human beings. God would never force a yes from anyone, would never trick anyone into a response of love, would never make obedience the best choice if people didn't truly have the option of disobedience as well. That's the way it has been from the beginning of creation. God has always laid before us the option to follow the Creator's will or go our own way. But God also reminds us there are consequences for our choices. 
And now, in the fullness of time, in this moment, an angel stands before a young girl asking her a question, his knees knocking together, trying to keep the quiver out of their voice as he and all the angelic host and even God wait. Will she do it? Will she say yes? And the answer Mary gave, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. With this answer, all the heavens rejoice and the plan is set in motion that would cause a new light to shine in the darkness. New hope, new peace, new freedom, love becomes incarnate. And Mary's answer gives words for us too. These are words that can change everything. During Advent, we have been learning and hearing how we are to prepare for the coming of the Lord, how to become more and more like the disciples, the followers of Christ, we are meant to be. To consider Advent's gift to us, a time for slowing down, for waiting, for watching, for self-examination, so that we might become more attuned to the God who is always anxiously awaiting to meet us, who waits upon us to say yes or no. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Words that have the power to change everything. Now Mary wasn't the first to say these words. She stands in a long line of witnesses who have been brave or joyous or adventurous or naively ignorant or grateful or hopeful enough to say to God's request, here I am. Noah said, here I am, when God told him to build a floating zoo in which he and his family would spend the next 40 days and nights seasick and wondering about God's sense of humor in making this his reward for righteousness. Abram said, here I am, when God told him in his old age to pack his things, go with his wife Sarai, and go sight unseen to an unknown, unspecified land that God would show him. Today's first reading is a chapter from the life of David, the least likely of a household of brothers chosen to be God's. The boy Samuel said, here I am and then began a long career of speaking truth to the powers that be, King Saul in particular, and being the bearer of the unpleasant news that Saul had done wrong in God's sight. Samuel had no way of knowing if he would still have his head, let alone his job in the morning. And the great prophet Isaiah said, here I am, but then also honestly also said, but feel free to find someone else. And Mary, this young girl, as Beekner points out, hardly old enough to bear a child, ponders and asks and wonders how and why any of this can be possible, to which Gabriel replies, nothing is impossible with God. The stakes are staggeringly high here, young, unwed in a culture that saw this reality grounds for banishment or death. Yet Mary says, yes. The name of Mary's baby is to be Jesus. In Hebrew, the name Yahshua, meaning Yahweh, for God liberates, God gives freedom. When we are willing to serve God and do what God asks of us, it is free. When we can stop asking, what's in it for me? What will I get out of this? Then we know freedom when we are freed from all attempts to be self-important, self-serving, we can truly be freed, freed for service, for purpose, for meaning. Our gospel today cuts off what comes next in the narrative, and so we heard it in place of the psalm, as Mary sets to music her understanding of this new reality. My soul, she sings to her cousin Elizabeth, who is also a living reminder that nothing is impossible with God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. 
for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. Here we are on the cusp of Christmas. In fact, in just a few hours, we will reset things here. Yes, Margie, then we will light the Christmas tree and prepare to celebrate in our own ways the birth of Christ. And we do so against the backdrop of a world that seems to be so incredibly and wearily broken and lost. And yet this story of Mary reminds us again and again, year in and year out, that nothing is impossible with God. That saying yes, even in the face of staggering odds, can be the catalyst for change. Ken Kesselis, a former bishop in the United States, wrote, we are to be the bearers of Christ, for our bodies are the only places where he may live on this earth. We are the body of Christ. When we let Christ dwell within us, and when we share Christ with others, God will be with us always. By opening our lives to Christ, we too, like Mary, will be blessed among all women and men. So don't think the angels aren't holding their breath to hear your answer when God approaches you with a task. And don't think just because you can't hear it that all the heavenly hosts aren't singing hallelujah. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. So do we search for God because we are human? Or are we human because we search for God? But does God search for us? That's not even a question. God does. Amen. In your service booklet, page four, I invite you to stand as you are able as we share in an affirmation of belief. That we worship one God, creator, redeemer, and Holy Spirit, in whose image we are made, to whose service we are summoned, by whose presence we are renewed. This we believe, that it is central to the mission of Christ, that we participate through word and action to rejoice in the diversity of human culture, to preserve the earth in all its beauty and frailty, to witness to the love of God for every person, and to invite all to share in that converting experience. This we believe, that through the power of the Holy Spirit, the persecuted shall be lifted up and the wicked will fall. The heartfelt prayers and hidden actions of God's people shall change for good the course of human history. The ancient words of scripture shall continue to startle us with fresh insight. That God has called the church into being to be the servant of the kingdom, to be a sign of God's new order, to celebrate in every land worship which raises our hearts to heaven. This we believe, that Christ, fully aware of our differences, prays that we may be one so that the world may believe. This we believe and to this we are committed for the love of God in the way of Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God of all justice and peace, we cry out to you in the midst of the pain and trauma of violence and fear which prevails in the Holy Land. Be with those who need you in these days of suffering. We pray for people of all faiths and for the peoples of the entire earth. We pray to you, Lord God, 
for an end to the violence as we remember Ukraine and the other troubled spots of the world. Today we pray for Linda, our primate, Sander, our bishop, our wardens, Mayan and Zachary, Zachary, our interim warden, for Paul, our rector and dean, Helen, our retired priest, deacons, Ray and Maggie, Heather, our retired deacon, Jillian, our engagement leader, Paul, Nick, Russ, Pauline, and all others who make music in this place, and those who minister in so many ways, both lay and ordained. God, we join our prayers to those of Mary, your faithful servant and the mother of our Lord, to proclaim your greatness and sing in gratitude for all the wonderful gifts bestowed on us, your lowly servants. Lord, we pray, look down with love upon this cathedral and its congregation. Be with us as we focus on the coming of your kingdom and the gift of your son this Christmas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mary prayed that the mighty be cast down from their thrones. We pray that those in power could use that power wisely and compassionately so that the lowly will be lifted up, the hungry fed, and greater equality be established between rich and poor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mary's prayer was given to God while on a visit to her cousin Elizabeth. At this time of Advent and Christmas, we pray for the safety of all who must travel. Lord, in your mercy. Mary recognized your promise of mercy. We ask you to show mercy on those who are sick, fearful, or in mourning. And especially today, we pray for Stephanie, Philip, Leslie, Howard, Liv, Rosemary, Dave, Paul, Bob, Laura, Marilyn, Ian, Bill Hall and family, John, Shirley, Stephanie, Wilma, Lillian, Philip, Jim, and those known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy. Father, you sent to earth the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, that in your power and love, we might also have the gift of eternal life. Bless those that have departed this life and have life eternal. We remember Eleanor and those known to you alone. Heavenly Father, we choose the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of the promised Savior. Fill us, your servants, with your grace, that in all things we may embrace your holy will and with her rejoice in your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Returning to the service booklet, page five. Emmanuel, through your incarnation, you have shown us what it is to live imaginatively, love expansively, and act creatively. We confess that sometimes we have waited without thought and so have stifled fruitful possibility. Emmanuel, we confess that sometimes we have waited without generosity and so have constricted fruitful connection. Emmanuel, we confess that sometimes we have waited without hope and so have limited fruitful action. Emmanuel, we confess that sometimes we have been simply too busy or too distracted to wait and so have missed your moment. Emmanuel, we look once more for you. Forgive the poverty of our waiting. Touch our dreaming, stretch our living, and energize our heart, that we may be ready for your coming.
For all to whom regret is real, who seek renewal, God forgives you, Christ renews you, and the Holy Spirit enables you to grow in love. Amen. May the peace of Emmanuel, the dynamic peace of imaginative dreaming, the challenging peace of radical loving, the powerful peace of engaged action fill you to overflowing in this season of waiting. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And let us greet one another in a word of peace. And as we prepare now the altar to share in Eucharist, the hymn 59. This is the table of Emmanuel, a place where bread and wine remind us how to live and love as those who inhabit God's time and to work to build his kingdom, a place where we recognize that the one for whom we wait is also the one who is already and always here with us. So come, whether you are watching for the dawn or dreading first light, whether you are waiting with hope or hiding your face, come with quiet confidence, because here it is Emmanuel who watches for our coming and who waits with love and joy to welcome us in. Together, God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. The story of Emmanuel is the story of God waiting to inhabit time, who took on flesh and form and lived among us so that we might reimagine life. It is the story of Jesus waiting to be betrayed, who shared supper with his friends, blessing and breaking bread, and pouring and sharing wine so that we might reimagine love. It is the story of Christ waiting in the tomb for God's moment, who threw down the gates of hell and drew away the sting of death so that we might reimagine the world. It is the story of one who knows what it is to wait and who shows us what it is to wait well. And so, taking this bread and wine, we remember and celebrate the waiting which began to change the world. And we join our voices with all who still wait and work for that change to come to completion. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of love and light, heaven and earth are full of your light. Glory to you, our God. Blessed is he, blessed are we, Blessed are all who come to your light. Glory to you, our God. And as we follow the example of Jesus, send down your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine, that as they are transformed into the body and blood of Christ, so too may we be transformed that we may find the imagination, the courage, and the strength to use our waiting time to build God's kingdom of joy, justice, and peace. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Look, the body of Christ is broken for the life of the world. Here is Christ coming to us in bread and wine. And these are the gifts of God. For the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Our closing prayer, page 10 of your bulletin. Page 10 of the service bulletin. The earth still waits for its healing. May we who are part of that waiting take and use the dreaming times to reimagine the world, inhabit and use the liminal times to discover the patterns of God, embrace and use the quickening times to learn how to live and love. So may our watching and waiting join with that of Emmanuel to realize God's kingdom here on earth. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning, both those present and those online. Our services continue today at 4 o'clock, a youth-led service, 7 o'clock, a choral Eucharist, and 10.30 for 11, a traditional Book of Common Prayer service with Maritime Brass, Cathedral Choir, and Capella Regalis. Christmas Day, a service at 10 a.m. As you go forth into the world, know that God journeys with you. So now go in peace. Do what God wills. Follow where Christ calls. Pray for the gifts of the Spirit. And the blessing of God, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, rest on and remain with you now and always. Amen. And our closing hymn, hymn 101, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. Go in hope, peace, joy, and love to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.